Hello, I'm Archie Luxury and welcome to the Archie Luxury channel. Today I want to continue viewer emails. So let's um, let's open up the mail bag. This is the email bag. Okay. I am hi Archie. I am left-handed and prefer wearing watches on my on the right wrist, particularly to, to avoid dirtying the leather strap while writing. What is your opinion of people wearing watches on the right wrist? Thanks, Tim. Tim, Archie actually wears two watches at once, one on both, one on either hand. So, um, to actually comment on that, there, look, you can wear it any any uh, appendage you feel like. Next, next email. Hi Archie, about a month ago there was a Rolex Explorer 2 from 1985 with the cream coloured, he says bezel, but it's actually the dial, up for seven day auction. For six days the price was around two to twenty two hundred US dollars. The watch sold for over seven thousand US. Talk about a great investment, even if it was bought, purchased new in 1985. Okay, look, for, for, let's just cut to the chase here. That model, that's a 16550, and that's a very, very special Rolex watch. The cream colored uh, dial is extremely rare, and that's the reason why that watch was worth that much. And uh, that, that's actually the, the changeover model from when the, um, the 1655 became Sapphire and became the 16550. And uh, it was replaced by the 16570, which Archie actually has. And uh, they, uh, that was a very rare watch. And I'm not surprised it sold for that sort of money. Extremely rare, extremely valuable. I think you're harping up the wrong tree. You're trying to say what a great investment they are. Look, Rolex is a great, but that's that's a very special watch. Okay, next viewer email. Hi, my name is Matthias Dal Gaglio. I'm 38 years old. I'm Italian. I'm writing from Italy. I live in a city called Ravenna, world famous for its mosaics, and he's he's attached a he's attached a photo as well. And uh, just like all fucking Italians, they're always slim and uh, good looking. Wouldn't trust him with, um, you know, you, you certainly wouldn't wouldn't trust him with the missus. But um, yeah, okay. The reason I write is that I would love to work with you. I think that in Italy at this time, you can do good business with luxury watches. Do you think that I just bought a Rolex Oyster Perpetual Lady date just 26 mil full gold for 2000 euro with original box on papers 1981 then I can buy a Patek Philippe 18 carat for only 1200 euro I attach the photos so I do know if prices are favorable if you're interested in working with me let me know also if you're interested in the watches of the photographs let me know what you offer me I look forward to hearing from you Thank you very much, Matthias. Now, Matthias, look, Italians are the most crooked fucking individuals known to man. They they can't lie straight in bed. I mean, Italy is one of the hottest places for wristwatches. I mean, they know every fucking thing about every damn model, every fucking variation. And it, and look, to be honest with you, there are no bargains in Italy. There are sharks. Sharks. With the price seems too good, it often is. So, look, Matthias, thanks very much for your vote and confidence of Archie, but uh, I know better than to be, be fooled by Italian tricksters. Okay, next email. To Archie Luxury, can you do a video on the Jacob & Co. and Johnny Dang Luxury watches? It would be greatly appreciated. They're just, uh, look, I, I, I'm not interested in doing anything videos about pieces of shit brand. If they, either of those two companies want me to do a review, they can send me a sample watch and I'll gladly spruik their wares. But no free um, reviews, I'm afraid. Okay, next one. Archie, first I'd like to thank you for your very well done and informative videos regarding watch collecting. I have gained knowledge and respect for pieces that I have previously overlooked. Your recommendations for top 10, I must say, was a well-chosen representation of fine and collectible watches. Now to the question at hand. I'm interested in a Breitling Montbrilliant Olympus Moondial Blackface. I have seen a stunning piece in excellent condition at a reasonable price. However, upon closer inspection, I see that the subdials for the days and the week and month of the year are in French. 
I am in America and have a concern that this will affect resale value should I choose to sell the piece in the future. I looked at photos of this watch on, on several sites including Breitling.com and uh, see that the French is used here as well. I'm wondering if this is standard. Should I be concerned about the French subdials? Thank you for your assistance. Gary. Gary, nothing wrong with them being in French. Uh, French is the language of love and I mean as long as it's not in fucking German uh, I'd, I'd say go for it nothing wrong with that I mean English is fucking overrated French is great it's the uh, that's a great language that, that, that that's okay be aware it's only a fucking Valjoux 7750 modified movement it's 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 not using an in-house movement but I do like that particular model and, and I can understand the uh, the reasons for going for it don't go for the 38 mil version that's my advice go for the bigger one um, okay Next question. The reason I say that, 38 mil is quite large enough, but you'll never sell the fucking thing because Breitling collectors always want the obscene, obnoxious dinner plate special size. Next question. What do you think about the Rolex Datejust in yellow gold with the yellow with the leather strap from Cameron? Look, Cameron, I've, uh, I've owned a few solid gold head watches, and I've got to be completely honest with you. They normally... You, uh, most cases they came with a bracelet and the bracelet has stretched a buggery, worn out, broken, any number of sins have happened to it and that's now why it's on a strap. There were some that originally did come on straps but um, yeah it's okay, it's kind of cool. I, I actually had a Rolex Oyster Perpetual I had on a, um, I had on a rubber strap so I could swim with it and uh, they're okay but the the Rolex the whole thing about the beautiful thing about the Rolex is the bracelet so you know that they are heavily discounted because of that fact okay next question holy trinity or the four horsemen to Archie luxury you've all you always prefer refer to AP PP and VC as being the holy trinity of watchmaking but in the past you said that VC and maybe AP as well regularly use Jaguar LeCoultre parts wouldn't that put them in the same league as the others even if it if not the line must be fine so fine that it's blurred well look the holy trinity is three members only AP PP VC Jaguar LeCoultre does make a fan they made a lot of parts for those those three members however the finishing on them from Jaguar LeCoultre when they uh, were sold to the other company it was always done better so Jaeger La Coultre, I love the brand I've got a grand reverso date and I love that piece but the reality is it's just under the Holy Trinity the Holy Trinity is those three members I mean I mean that's what it is you know it's it's uh, that's what it is it's the three musketeers it's not the four musketeers and uh, Jaeger La Coultre is a fantastic brand I love the brand but the reality is AP, PP, VC, uh, that is the Holy Trinity. And they, whenever they did get movements from Jaeger La Coultre, they did finish them a little bit better. So, yep, that's, um, that's, uh, that's the truth there. But Jaeger La Coultre is a fantastic brand. Okay, final email from Dog Balls. Hi, Archie. Love the channel. Was wondering your thoughts are on the Bowman Mercer Riviera, Riviera watch. It does have some racing heritage, but wondering if this was decent mid-range watch or is this a waste of cash? Second hand, of course, retail 3,000, used 1,000. I was also interested in the Nomos range of watches, modified movements, but I'm told they're significantly modified. Yeah, that's what they all fucking say. I am 21 and saving cash. Uh, a well-priced mid-price range. I currently have three vintage 50s pieces and a Archie Med Pilot as an everyday full fun ETA watch. Thanks, dog balls. Look, I gotta be honest with you, the Borman Mercer Riviera range, Borman Mercer and Ebel, when I was a watch dealer, they were fucking impossible to sell, but I gotta say, I always was drawn to Borman Mercer, and and uh, I, I um, <clears throat> the Borman Mercer range, the Riviera range, they also brought out a solid gold version. <coughs> so, they do have some good shit, Look, I reckon they're not bad. I, I personally would prefer a Bournemouth Mercer to a fucking tag any day of the week. 
So I'd give it the thumbs up. It sounds okay. Try and haggle a little bit more because they are soft as ice cream that's been put in the summer sun. I'm Archie Luxury. Tell me what you think. Goodbye. <laughs>